Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Two fellows who enjoyed extraordinarily good health would meet for a birthday coffee at a local diner every year. Harry was 99 and Joe was 100 years of age. In the middle of a conversation about family, sports, the weather, the older said to the younger, Harry, how much time do you think you have left? Harry said, I, I don't know, I, I guess I feel pretty good. What about you, Joe? Joe said that uh, he thought that he'd been moving a little slower in the second century of life, that, that he'd been thinking about heaven a little bit more, and he had some questions about heaven. Harry, he said, what kind of health coverage do you think we'll have in heaven? <laughs> Harry said, well, yeah, I, we've been covered by Medicare for a while, though some days I feel Medicare-less. You know, I, I hope that God has one of those gold plans that covers some of our prescriptions. And Joe said, yeah, that's really true. There are some Sundays that I take more pills than the Vikings have rushing yards. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need some of that health insurance supplement stuff. Yeah, said Harry. What about dental, dental coverage? Uh, I can't expect these teeth to last forever, even though 99 years is a pretty good start. Yeah, said Joe. And I'd, I'd like some of that Blue Perks stuff out of Blue Cross Blue Shield so I can get that LASIK surgery. I haven't been able to see where to park the car now for three years. Woman named Martha, the next table, overhears the conversation. She's 105. She says, Oh, for Pete's sake, you two, you're not going to need health coverage in heaven. You, you, you don't need blue cross, blue shield. All you need is the shield of faith and the cross of Christ. Well, that's an absurd conversation, yes? It's so absurd. I know none of you have ever had a conversation with anybody about the health coverage you will have in a place where there is no death or mourning or crying or pain anymore. But really, it is no more absurd than the challenge brought to Jesus in our gospel for today by the Sadducees, a group of Jewish leaders who don't believe in the resurrection. They postulate an absurd example. A man marries a woman, and he dies without children. Then his brother marries the same woman and dies without children. Then a third brother marries the same woman and dies without children. Then a fourth brother, well, you get the idea. And this goes through seven brothers. It was not uncommon in Jesus' day for a man to marry the widow of a relative. It was part of the social safety net. It provided security for the woman and was in some way a possibility of carrying on the family tradition. But people, seven brothers, all seven marrying the same woman, that's absurd. And then, and then the Sadducees propose the preposterous question. Now, because this woman has been married seven times, Jesus, in the resurrection, which we don't believe in, whose wife will she be? The Sadducees are waiting for Jesus to say anything. Whatever answer he gives, they're ready to pounce on him with both feet on his neck because there is no good answer to a preposterous question. Or maybe there is. Jesus tells the Sadducees that their premise about the resurrection is all wrong. The Sadducees think that because we marry and are given in marriage in this world that we will marry and be given in marriage in the next world. Jesus really calls that absurd. Perhaps as absurd as because we have health coverage in this world, we will need health coverage in the resurrection. Jesus says, for those who have a place in the resurrection, 
They will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will not be constrained by the things of this world, things that are necessary for us, like health insurance. For instance, in two days, we will have an important election in our country. We at Bethel hope that you will all go to vote and that you will take your faith into the voting booth with you. That faith is an important part of who you are, and as you fill in the little circles, you will consider what it is that is God's will for our nation and our people. We believe that God institutes government for the good order of people, as it says in the Bible. Now, we know that in a great big place like this, people will be filling in various circles. That's all right. We have deliberated on the will of God now for two millennia, and we have not come to complete agreement as to what God's will is for the world. We will even cancel each other out at times. That's all right, as long as as we do our best in taking our faith into the booth and doing what we believe is God's will for the world. But you know, I don't see any election booths in, in the next kingdom. We're not going to have to elect leaders because we will have one leader. We will have a king who's got at his heart our peace and joy. We won't have to vote on constitutional amendments or judges or school referenda because we will all have all knowledge and we will live at peace and joy with one another. The Bible is really quite scant with details about the resurrection, but there are three things that I take specifically from Jesus' words today. First, we just need to dream bigger, folks bigger than whatever our current existence offers to us. Because in this age, we will be like, like angels, the children of God. Second, I take from Jesus that we will know each other in heaven. Otherwise, Moses and Jesus would not be talking about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. We will recognize each other. We will recognize all people, including those of 4,000 years ago whom we have never seen yet. And finally, third, God is the God of the living, not of the dead. And that gives us great good hope on a day like today, All Saints Sunday. For some of you, a loss is fresh, and your grief is profound. With you, the church gathers and even gathers around you. But the church gathers in the full and expectant hope of a God who is the God of the living. A God who takes from this world people where death can do its work unto a place where death is no more. Death is no more. And we will be reunited with those we love. We will know who they are. All of the resurrected in the Bible who are named have recognizable visages. Abraham, Lazarus, Elijah, Moses. I fully expect that I will be living in heaven with people like Kathy and Blanche and Chris and Kari and Tim I don't necessarily believe that we are going to live in a nuclear family, one of the constraints of this world, because after all, by the time we get to heaven, most of us are going to be quite old, and what generation will we live in? Instead, God has a mystery, a new way by which we will live with those we love. There is no mystery about this. It will be a time of inexpressible joy. It will be a time in which we are part of of the angels, the children of God. We celebrate that life this day and every day. Amen. Please rise for the hymn.